Hey, this is Avi Gutman with another Ask Me Anything event brought to you by QuantReasoning.com. I invite you to join me live next time. We do this every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern, and you can attend for free by starting your free trial at QuantReasoning.com. So as I alluded to a minute ago, these answer choices should trigger something for you. And the thing that they should trigger is, oh, working backwards from the answer choices might, might be a good idea for this question. Why? Uh, well, because they're really nice integers in ascending order. So it's possible that I'll choose to work backwards in this question depending on the question. So then I start reading. Running at their respective constant rates, machine X takes not twice as long, not 20% longer, not some kind of multiplicative reasoning ratio type comparison, but rather an additive change, two days longer, to produce W widgets than machine Y, period. So we've got to stop there. And why am I making such a big deal of the fact that this is not a ratio and that I cannot infer a ratio? Of course, with a, with a difference of two, the ratio could be anything, right? The, the numbers of days could be three and one, so that's a ratio of three to one. Or they could be five and three, that's a ratio of five to three. Or they could be ten and eight, that's a ratio of five quarters. So I don't know what the ratio is, and that's a big deal because it's much more likely without having any ratios to work with, it's much more likely that solving this mathematically will require building and solving a quadratic equation, which I'm not willing to do on this test. So I'm glad that I glanced at the answer choices ahead of time because now I'm 99% sure that I want to work backwards from the answer choices. And I've established that at the period. So we read the first sentence, and it turns out that machine X is slower than machine Y. It takes two days longer. At these rates, if the two machines together produce... Now, this is super annoying, right? We were talking about W widgets, and now we're talking about 5 fourths widgets. So we're no longer in a level playing field. And I would like for the work to be the same work. But I can fix that pretty easily, and here's how I do that. I would say the following. If you can make this many widgets in three days, how long would it take you to make one W, a single W? Well, it should take more time or less time than three days. If you only wanted to produce W widgets instead of five yes. fourths, it would take less time. That's right. We can use ratios here to figure out exactly how much time it would take. You see, W is what fraction of this amount of work. Do, I, do we want to do half of that amount of work? Do we want to do a third of that amount of work? What fraction of that amount is W? If this said 5W, you would all say, well, we only want to do one-fifth as much work. If this said 8W, you'd all say, okay, we only want one-eighth as much work. Look at what you're doing there. You're taking the reciprocal. If this said half W, you'd say, oh, we want to do twice as much work. Again, taking the reciprocal. So what's the reciprocal of 5 fourths? 4 fifths. So a single W would take 4 fifths as long as 3 days. Okay, so what's 4 fifths of 3? 12 fifths. That's how long it would take them together to produce W. So now we're talking about like and like, apples and apples, right? We're talking about W widgets here, and we're talking about W widgets here. I'm ready to keep reading. How many days would it take Machine X alone to produce... Here we go again, GMAT, right? Again, changing the amount of work on me. But this is, I think, an easier thing to fix than the previous one, because however many days it would take Machine X alone to produce two W widgets, it would take it half as long to produce a single W widget. So I'm going to go to the answer choices, and I'm going to really quickly 
rewrite each of them so that we're talking about the number of days it would take machine X to produce W. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting each answer choice in half so that it'll, it'll be easier for me to work backwards from the answer choices in a level playing field. Now we're, all, we're talking about W widgets, W widgets, and W widgets. So I think that's an important first step. And my hope is that we can get this far in about one minute. Now that I have these five options for the number of days it takes machine X alone, I'd like to incorporate that information from the first sentence to supply each of these answer choices with the number of days that it would take machine Y on its own. So I know that machine Y is two days faster and that immediately eliminates answer choice A because it doesn't make sense that machine Y could do the job in zero days. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to input the number of days, the appropriate number of days for machine Y in each of these based on the information from statement one. Now all I have left to do, and again at this point we're hopefully not, more, not much more than one minute in, all I have left to do is ask myself which of these pairs of numbers, right, so 2 and 0, or 3 and 1, or 4 and 2, or 5 and 3, or 6 and 4, which of those pairs would give me the 12 fifths that I have over here when I take the product divided by the sum? And that's that formula from my book that Surajit recalled, where if you know the amount of time it takes one machine on its own, and you know the amount of time it takes another machine on its own, you can infer the amount of time it would take them together if you take the product of their individual times and divide that by the sum of their individual times. And that's always going to be true as long as the work is the same work. And that's why it was important for me, first of all, to put them all in a level playing field where we were talking about W, W, and W, as opposed to W, 5 fourths W, and 2 W. A, I don't even have to test because it's nonsensical that a machine could do it in zero days. Multiplying 3 times 1 and dividing by their sum, that would give me 3 quarters, which is definitely not the same as 12 fifths. Multiplying 4 times 2 and dividing by their sum would give me 8 sixths, or 4 thirds, so that's also not the same as 12 fifths. Multiplying 5 times 3 divided by their sum, that's 15 eighths, and 15 eighths is not the same either as 12 fifths. So I don't even have to test the last answer choice, I'm ready to pick it and move on. And I hope that you'll agree that this is possible to do in under two minutes. And just for fun, if you do multiply 6 times 4, you get 24 divided by their sum, which is 10. So 24 over 10, yes, that reduces to 12 fifths. That's our answer. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.